I'm on the road to recovery in Castle Rock, Colorado. Hi, from Millville, New Jersey. I'm on the road to recovery. We're on the road to recovery in Morgantown, West Virginia at Mountaineer Field. And live in Scranton, Pennsylvania, I'm on the road to recovery. Here I am on the road to recovery from Berlin, Maryland. Hey, from Caseville, Michigan, I'm on the road to recovery. I'm on the road to recovery at Ann Arbor, University of Michigan. I'm Michael DeLeon, and we'll see you on the next episode of On the Road to Recovery. Check out this episode and all our episodes at recoveryarmy.com. So for me, my addiction really began probably around the age of 12. It was, you know, the occasional alcohol on the weekends with my friends or, you know, I tried marijuana. And um, for me, addiction is a family disease. My mom gets high, uh, my dad uses as well, and uh, they still actively use. But my life was kind of that active chaos that goes along with addiction growing up. And, you know, I used to say that I was a victim of sexual abuse that I was a victim of growing up with, with nothing and now I recognize that I was a survivor but around the age of 15 I decided to tell my, my mom that it had happened and I think I prepared myself for every possible response except for the response that she gave me which was I know. And um, because she gave me the response I know, I felt angry and betrayed and alone and I reacted because of that and I just kind of said, I'm going out and I'm going out hard and by the time I was 15 I was um, shooting heroin and smoking crack. I felt really alone and I was that girl in school that you would have never guessed had that problem. Um, I played field hockey, I ran track, I swam in the winter, I got straight A's, I made honor roll, I was on student government, I, I did all of those things. and. Uh, I just started kind of rebelling. I needed relief and I found it through drugs and alcohol and I quickly spiraled. I was always younger in school. I was still 16 my senior year, so I graduated when I was 17 years old. I graduated with honors with a needle in my arm. You know, it wasn't too long afterwards that I remember going home in the middle of the night, one of the nights that I snuck out. My grandparents told me, you can't leave, you can't go anywhere, and I snuck out. And uh, I came back and the locks were changed and my bags were packed and my grandma told me, like, I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. And it quickly began that streak of, I stayed on this couch and that couch and that couch. I tell you, if you forget your last high, you're doomed to repeat it, but I'll never forget it because I woke up in a bathtub of a foreclosed home, half dressed. I, I couldn't even comprehend what happened. I'd overdosed. They let me there, you know, and I looked around and for the first time in a long time, I saw where I was for what it really was. And I was there shooting dough, dog shit in the corners, you know. Um, I really believe that it was my spiritual awakening that said, like, Alicia, you don't have to live like this. I picked up my track phone, you know, and I called on my track phone. Um, I said, I need help, I need to go to treatment. I was 79 pounds, I could suck my stomach in and touch my fingertips around my waist when I got clean. I did, I did whatever it took, and I, I've not given up since, and that was August 29th of 2005. You know, the 12 steps changed my life. They really helped me to identify that, like, that pain, I don't have to carry that anger and pain anymore. Recovery is amazing. To tell you that I was homeless on the street, 79 pounds with a habit of three bundles a day, right? Um, to I put myself through college, um, a Penn State graduate in the area of criminal justice. That I am currently finishing my master's right now in mental health counseling at Capella. I was a drug and alcohol counselor for um, a dual diagnosis treatment facility in Pennsylvania known as Pyramid Healthcare. I worked there for nine years through my schooling until I graduated and recently took an assistant director position at Blair County Drug and Alcohol Programming um, that helps me to make systemic changes for people like me. 
You know, I, I'm in a recovery advocacy group known as Rise for Recovery. Um, we work on overdose prevention, you know, um, carrying prevention into the schools. It's like my life is better than I could have ever imagined. And through the process of recovery, I had a son, and he's a miracle, and he's amazing, and because of recovery, he's never had to see me use. He's never had to have a mother who got high. He's never had to want for anything the way I wanted. You know, um, and they'll never have to. And I've developed a relationship with a higher power that's amazing. If I would have made a, a list in my early recovery of all the things I thought I would gain from it, I would have been selling myself short. I'm not broken, I'm not damaged goods, I'm not tainted, you know. Um, I used to believe if you would sell me in the store, you'd find me on the 50% off shelf, but like I know that I'm limited edition, right? And, and not in a way that it's pride and ego, but in a way that like I love myself today. And I never thought I'd be able to say that. Thank you so much for watching on the road to recovery. You can see this episode and all our episodes at www.recoveryarmy.com.